Hi there, my name is Kevin Alcuni, and I'm a librarian here in the Department of Exploration and Creativity. And my name is Diana Levo Posner, and I'm the Principal Librarian and Associate Director of the Exploration and Creativity Department with the Los Angeles Public Library. And we are here to welcome you to today's LA Made Machine Tacos. That's how my <laughs> mom would say it. Machine Tacos. All right, you got it. Nailed it. Before we begin, we'd like to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you virtually. LA Made focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles, highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you'd like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events. Ring. And for our LA Made programs, visit lapl.org slash LA Made. Our website also has blog posts and video links that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. We would also like to take this opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the first people of this land, honor their elders, past and present, as well as their descendants who are citizens of, this na of these nations. For more information on which ter territory you may reside in, check out native-land.ca, uh, and it's right down there. And we're gonna put it in the comments later. And now onto today's program, Machine Tacos. Ring in Cinco de Mayo with Machine Taco Chef Jonathan Perez as he shows how to make pork belly al pastor taco kit to pair with a pineapple chili de pepin mezcal <laughs> cocktail. Machine go Tacos recently won LA Tacos 2020 Taco Madness Online taco tournament, as well as being named best breakfast burrito by food and wine and best pop-up taqueria by LA Times food critic, Bill Addison. Raised in Compton, Jonathan Perez was on his way to becoming a professional skateboarder when a car accident at 17 changed his life's course. After the accident, he would enroll in the Le Cordon Bleu Culinary School and would later cook with classical French techniques at the La Mirage Hotel, I think that's how you say it, in Beverly Hills and the Le Epicure Market in Culver City. Sorry, restaurants. You just uh, have to help like this, pretend you're French. Um, I don't think that's gonna help my accent. <laughs> Jonathan also took a job at IHOP where, because he wanted to learn how to cook eggs perfectly, uh, which is a great little thing to learn. Uh, and so now let's welcome to our stage, Jonathan Perez. Hello. Hey guys, how's it Bravo. going? Hi. You guys hear me good? Yeah. 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 Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can, I can hear you guys. Okay. okay. So we're going to stick around, but we're going to be off camera to make some witty banter as we see your cooking magic happen. Let it begin. Okay, okay guys. So right now, what I'm going to show you guys how to do the al pastor marinade for your pork belly. So um, above, uh, you guys should have your ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how, like, what are you guys gonna blend inside the blender for it? So we're gonna start with your um, chile ancho and chile guajillo, uh, pineapple juice, sugar. This is for the cocktail, Jonathan. No, this is so. This is uh, oh, this is the marinade. This is a, this is a marinade. This is al pastor marinade to gotcha. uh, marinate our pork belly and. We're gonna cook this pork belly for three hours in the oven. And then I'm gonna show you guys how how, it's in, how the pork belly looks after those three hours are done. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. So also you're gonna put some of this marinade aside because you're gonna save some of that marinade for once your pork belly is done. So when you slice your pork belly, you can uh, like uh, submerge them in that marinade and sear them off so you still get some of those uh, uh, flavors incorporated deeply in the, in the pork belly. We got uh, the garlic, salt, this is a, a whole clove, a grounded whole clove, cinnamon, oregano, uh, cumin. Wow, looks like a lot of cumin. Yeah, uh, this is like the, the like the main ingredient for it for that. Oh, uh, okay, marinade. gotcha. And then we use uh, black pepper and the uh, chipotle. 
and then a little bit of white vinegar. And right now we're gonna start blending the the uh, the marinade. Oh, yeah, that is a lot of cumin now that I'm looking at the recipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool, though. Yeah. Wow, 10 pounds. Wow. How many people will that feed? That's like uh, enough for like uh, 10, 10 or 12 people, to be honest. Oh, it's gotcha. like a little feast if you're having people over, you know. Yeah, for, yeah. Like, Wait, it was 60 wanna, like, ounces? Mo what was six? that? Oh, six ounces. No, no, six ounces, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god that, that'd that be so my, much cumin that was my abuela that was my abuela asking that but also like the reason why we go a little bit uh heavy on our for this recipe for the cumin tea um because we use the same marinade for our mushroom al pasto uh and i feel that when you add mushroom uh heavy cumin on mushrooms because we have our our mushroom our mushroom al pasto taco here at the restaurant and the cumin uh Almost gives it that media like texture as long with the with uh whole clove with it. So when you're like uh searing it on the flat top, like you almost get that like flavor like you're eating like real meat and not like the mushroom. Oh gotcha. So I'm gonna start, so start blending everything right now. Okay. All right, we're gonna not hear the blender sound for a second. Right, because that's just too crazy. I mean, you know, you know. I think I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah, Here. yeah. All right. You could have had other music in the background. <laughs> All right, I think he's done. Thank All you, right. Steve. So, that's a pretty color. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, it looks fresh. That looks great. And uh, our pork belly is on a. Oh yeah. Do you trim it at all before? Uh no, because so what I do, the reason why I don't trim it is because uh I use those extra trims uh after for like the burritos and stuff like that. So um, I, I try to use the I utilize the whole belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we're gonna do we're adding the marinade to the pork belly. That looks heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jonathan's laughing at me. It's heavy. It's not pesado. <laughs> All right, so we're saving some of this marinade on the side. Is this how it should look? Yeah. That looks good. So you're going to make that for later? Oh, so it's got to marinate for three hours. Is that what you were saying? Uh, no, so with this, so this strictly goes straight into the oven. So, um, oh, you have to braise it for three hours. Gotcha, like three gotcha. Hours. Yeah. Uh, but I already have a, a finished product for you guys. Yeah. Um, so this is how it should look after. Yeah, after the. Ooh, that's a, yeah, good, good ah. color. Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven for you guys. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I'm gonna have uh, my guy make the cocktail for you guys. So this is. The cocktail that's in a farewell with the uh, with the pork belly dish. Yeah. Nice. I like how someone said we need LAPL bus to drive us over to a uh, machine. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. We have our we'll street fleet, but we can't fit that many people in there. <laughs> we'll take we'll take the lime. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. Yeah, you good? You good? Can you can every, everyone hear me? Mm, uh, it's little... a little muffled. It's a little muffled. How about now? Oh, perfect. All right. So for today, we're going to be doing like something like a pineapple picosita. When you have a, the, you know, the Madien Mezcal, this one's going to have reminiscent flavors of pineapple. We're going to have our rim, which is going to be optional. It's going to be a filoncillo, tahin rim. We have our chiles right here. So as Jonathan cooks, start mixing some up. Mmm, yeah. pinocillo. So yeah. for people like, I just remember as a kid, you know, the pinocillo and then just sucking on the big brown sugar. Mm. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. You know, we'll use it for, some people will use it for a cafe de olla. Some people will use it for other recipes as well. All right. So 
again, so for this one, I'm not going to use our measuring glass. We'll use it to make it easier. So we're going to do two ounces, I think two ounces of the pineapple um, agave syrup. Okay. Throw that in there. Very simple right here. I'm going to do about two ounces of, of the mezcal. Or at Diane's house, that would be four ounces. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This you know, it depends on you if you have a heavy hand or not. Yeah. Now, lastly, let me just get the pineapple juice. It's going to be one of the last components. Mm, I love pineapple juice. Okay. Pina. Mm. Sorry again. Mezcal. All right. We're going to throw in the two ounces of pineapple juice right here. Put that in there. Let's make it official. One tablespoon. And then chile pepini. What was that again? That's going to be the, the chile. Okay. Right. Chile pepini. We're going to muddle that in there. Shake that up real good. And as this is infusing, we got my ice right next to us. I'm gonna decorate this. And that's a lemon. Now, mm -hmm. This is gonna be an orange, just so, so that when you taste it, it's not mm -hmm. so sour. Got it. Compared to the traditional. Sorry. Yeah, mix. All right, we're gonna have that one. And get our ice cubes. Our department to BC DEPT at LAPL for um, all the recipes or to the cocktail and yeah, take it, take it, go. <laughs> Since the chili is going to have some shells, we're going to want to. I don't want to strain it, but let's put some ice cubes in there so we don't ruin our garnish. Mmm. That was good. That, Delish. So that ratio, you know, you could pretty much taste it from the camera. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Look at that, Kevin. If only we could really taste it, though. I know. Yum. You know, this one right here. And you know, it's gonna be a uh, pineapple picosita right here with some mezcal. And you know, just to be able to pair up with Jonathan's delicious plating. Oh, and yeah, if we're yeah. really getting creative, you know, we could throw in a little charred pineapple just to give it some flavor, some sweetness. Oh, yeah. Mm. Salud. Cheers. Salud, salud. <laughs> salud. Thank you guys. We're gonna go back to the chef. Okay, you thank you. In your time. Thanks, yeah, cocktail. Yeah. Thank you. Master. Two ounces mezcal, two ounces pineapple juice, two ounces pineapple simple syrup, one part pineapple, one part agave, one teaspoon the chili de pekin, garnished with roasted pineapple. I wonder, where can you get the chili? Is that a common ingredient? Uh, yeah, you can get it at like Northgate or any Mexican market, to be honest. Like, gotcha. You can get them there. How did you, did? is this a recipe you discovered or is it something you made? Uh, no, so actually, uh, I would like drink that like uh, after like working stuff, you know. Oh. I would, I would, they would they would have it ready for me at home, you know, just ready. Oh, you know, ready that's for cool. Me to relax. That's nice. You walk <laughs> in the door and they just hand you that. Oh yeah. There you go. That's fresh. So so right now, like while like we're waiting for the pork belly to be done, so we have the cocktail here. I'm going to show you guys how to how to do the the green salsa for you guys. The green oh, okay. avocado salsa. Nice. Mm. I'm really thirsty, Kevin. I don't know about you. Uh, sorry. I'm all out of mezcal here at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> As you should be. As I should be, because I would never do that, obviously. Not even in Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <sighs> but later, when you walk in your door, you mm -hmm. at home. Well, my wife is, yeah, he hands me a cocktail mixed. Yes. 
and shaking. I'm sure right now she's home, you know, putting, whipping it together. Yeah. <coughs> Ready for you. All right. So, for this one, we're going to add the roasted chile and okay. the tomatillo. Oh, cool. We're going to add the two uh, raw jalapenos, roasted um, onions. We're doing a whole uh, jalapeno a bunch. So you roast some of them, and then some of them are just unroasted. Yeah, so uh, so it's two roasted and two raw, so it's equal parts. So oh. with however many uh, roasted chiles you're gonna do, you have to use the same amount as raw chiles. What does that do when it's roasted and unroasted? Is it just a balance, like a flavor it's balance? It's a balance. It won't, it won't be too sweet. So oh, it's like okay. A balance. Yeah. Because remember, when you when you roast stuff, you activate your sugars from uh, oh, yeah, from yeah. the ingredients itself. So you don't want you don't want like a, a sweet salsa either, you know. It's sure. good for, like you gotta find the balance here as well. So with that, we're gonna add the avocados. Oops. <laughs> yes. Cameraman. It's all good. It's all good. It's a real kitchen, people. Yeah. Real kitchen, real. We're working. All right. It's not no fancy three camera Leia. They're doing a great job. So I appreciate it. Yeah. So we I love the big spoon getting that avocado. <laughs> it's like, look at that. It's like the Flintstone. Wilma's gotten her spoon out. Yeah, I just need the that's brontosaurus for, that's burger. That's our spoon for like our beans, though. You know, like yeah. Have to go in oh. Yeah, the big spoon. Like that. Oh. Mm, that avocado. Deliciosa. We're in a. So this is how it looks. So we're gonna add our water to it. And then we're gonna start blending once we add the water. Okay. And everyone should be hydrating at home. It's a warm day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, I'm gonna start blending right now. All right. Now we're making funny there banter. Yeah. Look at that. Ah. Oh. That's an also beautiful color. Yeah. Ah, all the Cinco de Mayo colors. <laughs> colores. That's what we should have had on the background, Steve and Kevin. The colores. Next time. Yeah, next time. Everyone can sing it in there, you know, at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. Talk amongst yourselves and sing the colores. Right, while the blender's going. Yes. For the green <laughs> avocado salsa. Perfect. Oh, wow. This is so great. And in the comments we put in, and on screen, we had put Jonathan's Instagram and also the location of the restaurant. So. Oh, yeah. So check uh, it out. All right. I think I think you can unmute him now, Steve. Oh, perfect. Whew, look at that oh, creamy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yummy. How long did it take you to kind of land on this recipe, Jonathan? Uh, honestly, it's just like, you know, just like building flavors. I mean um you just like you know it's trial and error and so it works and it turns yeah. out and honestly like when i'm when i'm like creating stuff like i let everybody try it um, oh for sure you know, i want everybody's opinion the group's opinion the team's opinion yeah and yeah. now you know like cause everybody has different taste buds you know so mm -hmm. that's kind of how we create stuff um, how yeah how long do you think how many tries do you think it takes before you kind of land on what it is does it depend um, I want to say it depends, but to be honest, uh, I've been cooking for for a good while, and just like not like to you know like to do my own horn and stuff like that. But uh, I I pretty much already had these flavors already like uh, captured in my in my brain, so oh. it's easier for me to create stuff just on based on my talent. So you yeah, know like yeah. my like my my senses in that sense, you know, like you already know how some uh taste profiles uh taste so you just know how to create when you see certain ingredients together so you can put them together it's a lot easier for sure uh, you can teach your own horn <laughs> you got the best breakfast burritos in town uh, uh, <laughs> let me uh let me get you guys uh let me show you guys after like the like the so the three hours fast already uh your pork belly should look this is so great. And, you know, I'm just going to remind everyone, back to the library, you can come to the library and check out books, cookbooks. 
So and many cookbooks. Cocktail yeah. books. Uh, so this is how, like, the pork belly. Once uh, after the three hours is done, and this is how it should look. Wow! Look at that. Yo, that's that looks really good. Do you salt the meat before you uh, put in the marinade? Uh, no, because uh, usually because uh, I add a lot of salt to the marinade. So, oh, okay. Um, I don't want to over salt it, cause still so I'm gonna uh, add some of the member the marinade that we put aside. Yeah, yeah. For it, like we're still gonna like submerge oh, it. Oh, okay. Marinade. I got you. So that's why you don't want to like over salt it. Because uh, when you over salt something, you can, you know, like it's hard to go back in it. You know? It's tart and it toughens it, doesn't the meat? If you over salt oh, it. Also, but, uh, you could also brine it too, though, you know, like a good way we used to do it when we had more time, we would brine our pork belly. So meaning we would submerge it in a, in a, uh, a sodium solution, you know, mm -hmm. like herbs and like peppercorns and all that stuff. And then we would leave it for 24 hours and pull it out and then. Like it, it helps like build the uh, flavors in there and capture more of the flavor in the marinade as well. Yeah, that's so, cool. So right now, like once we you know, we cut it in half. You need a nice big knife. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, Dude, and that does look really good. good. <laughs> Oh yeah. We're gonna... Jonathan, pick a card, any card. Look at that. Pick a pork belly. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna add the marinade to them. Mm. This is kind of how it should look. This is all like, yeah, we need it. So, right now we're gonna go ahead and uh sear off some of these pork belly and now we can start assembling our tacos. So we'll throw a little bit of oil, not a lot of oil, because uh, remember, pork is pretty fatty too, so it releases a lot of that fat. Uh, mm. So we're, so we're gonna just show you guys how to like how we're searing it because uh, before we did a lot of demos and like uh because of the heat it overheats the phone so they're gonna oh. take the phone over there and i'm gonna take it back away that way we won't log it off so just take the phone over there I'll, okay I'll we it got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah the phone's coming back and if anyone's just logging in now because we don't want it to the camera we don't want it to be overheated. we don't want to shut down yeah <laughs> then it'll just be me and diane with no food yeah with, yeah, with the big spoon and the delicious um, <laughs> Help Anna set up the thing here. Yeah? All right. Sizzle, sizzle. Here we go. Making the tacos. The pork let's belly. The, yeah, let's put the address back on in case somebody wants to come by. That's how's your guys' day been, though? How you guys been? How, how's your guys' been for the mile? Pretty good. I mean, we've been working all day, so not much celebrating. Maybe at the okay. house, though. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Make one, make one of these cocktails. Put some musica on and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we're putting up the, the recipe. Yeah. So 10 pounds, Kevin, of pork belly. Okay. <laughs> oh, so if you didn't want to do a big, uh, a big recipe, you can remember you can always break the recipe in half. You guys could do half of that and half the recipe. Oh, you want to break, down the third, break it uh, break down into a third of the recipe as well. Do you do you still cook it for the same amount of time though? Oh uh, yeah, same. Uh, you always want to braise it at least. You want to get pork belly three hours or or above. Okay. So well. even if it's half the if even if it's half the yeah, weight, you still yeah, want to cook half, it for the whole. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What so temperature hours. do you what temperature do you do you? I usually uh, go three uh three twenty five. Okay, so kind of a lower heat. 
it was like middle and slow. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it captures all those flavors and you know all those like you know sugars activating in there. Yeah. And we're just putting up the recipes on the screen. Right. And you can email us at ecdept at lapl.org in yeah. case you want to have us send you these recipes. Yeah, we can email them to you. Yeah. And then if you want to do math and you want to make, you know, the recipe, <laughs> you want to feed everybody in your family, you just want to feed yourself, you could do math and figure it all out. Right. Except for the cocktail, I say just you know, use the Yeah, same. just go for it. Don't have yeah. that. Double yeah. that. <laughs> so we're going to do two different types of like pork belly tacos. Here you guys see the stuff now? Yes. Okay. okay, so this is our flour tortillas with a little bit of melted cheese. Oh. The queso, always queso. Mm. And the lime. Yeah, have a sip of your cocktail now. Mm -hmm. Man, right here we have the blue corn. Oh, that's beautiful. Pork belly. Whew. It's like little angel wings. All right, here with this one here for the, uh, for the blue corn. We're going to create the same style we do for the restaurant here. Are you guys able to see this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's coming out good. A little dollops, little little green, <coughs> little buttons. And then for this one right here, we're gonna just uh, little swirls. You're getting fancy, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> that cordon bleu. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, just like they did at the La Hermitage Hotel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say I'm, I don't care? No, you said it right. I was okay. Just, yeah, I'm the one that said it wrong. We're, we're adding like a little bit of roasted uh, pineapple. Oh, um, is the salsa spicy? No, it's like very on the mild side. It's, not, I gotcha. it's more like you're rich and creamy because of the avocado. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. So we're adding a little bit of limes there for this mm. one. We'll do a little bit of pickle. Then traditionally, you would call this like what you would do like a, a gringa taco. Um, but uh, we're using like, you know, like our in-house made flour tortillas. So that's how mm. this one, uh, if you want to get like a little creative and stuff with the flour tortilla. And the other, the other taco, which is this one here, this is how we sell at the restaurant. A little bit of the cheese. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Ooh, look uh, at your plating. Of, uh, of nopales. Yeah. Oh. Like great nopales. Mm, nopal. So this is kind of like a, a play on like a... Uh, these are familiar. There's just dish and like it's called um, uh, cositas in chile in chile uh, in chile verde with nopales. So that's like uh, like my take on it. Mm -hmm. On that, but using pork belly. Yeah, for the gram. <laughs> it's the gram. And then, and then just like yeah, you know, tag uh, us. <laughs> At Los Angeles LA Public Library. <laughs> Wow. Look at that plating. So beautiful. Did you learn that at IHOP? <laughs> <laughs> no. I just say you just learned you just learn eggs there. Yeah, that would be El IHOP. Yeah. I'm not I'm not bagging on IHOP, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love IHOP. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. Except oh when it gosh, changed so to gorgeous. International House of Burgers. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, I'm pretending we're eating it right now, Kevin. Okay. Mm. Mm. And then and drinking our drink. There, and you have your, your lines in your cocktail right here. For you guys. Oh, look at that. Perfecto. Wow. Wow. That's, how long did it take you to kind of figure out the pork belly recipe? Uh, the pork belly one, that one's, uh, it didn't take much, to be honest. It's just, uh, um to be honest it's just like you know like i, I love to cook you know so it's just like yeah so again just like a lot of like trial and error and just like uh learn, learning from your mistakes and just like mm. every day you know? yeah like, yeah just being a little better every day so. what do you what do you cook when you're at home after like a long day 
<laughs> to be honest, I don't really cook much at home. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> he just drinks and then. When you get home, you, are you just are you just done with cooking when you get home? Um, I'm not done, but I mean. I know what you're saying. Yeah, time, you, you, like, I'm like you're always here cooking, you know. So I'm like here seven. I'm work seven days a a week, so we're always like creating, and I'm always like, here behind the line with my my people helping them out and you know prepping yeah. them out and stuff like that so it's like um <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like we're there except we don't have none of the experience yeah so uh, yeah i mean uh not for the, for the most part so i like to go try a different different few places and see what people are doing and i feel like the way i tell people go support other businesses and stuff and in order to create good food you gotta eat good food you know so you gotta try a little bit of everything Oh, so do you go out to eat quite a bit? Yeah, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the spots yeah. that you've been hitting up that you've been enjoying? Uh, for the most part, let's see. Recently, so I recently went to Odium. I mean, that song was really good with uh, Chef Tim and uh, Chef uh, Jonathan Granita. That was really good. Um, uh, which other spot that I recently went to? uh my buddy just opened up a restaurant called el barrio cantina in long beach um so that that was really good he's very uh he's very uh he's been one of the guys that's kind of been there as well like always showing support and like the back ends of you know because he's open the restaurants and stuff like that so you know like kind of like uh using him as advice and stuff like that for, cool. like, the shout out stuff. to the lbc where is it at, where is it in long beach on um, 4th Street. So, you know, remember the old Ashley's uh, dive bar? Oh, yeah. So, that's, so, he bought that location and he transformed it into it's called El Barrio Cantina. So, they're actually doing, like, for Cinco de Mayo, they're doing a collaboration with uh, another friend of ours called Evil, uh, their concert is called Evil Cooks. Uh -huh. So, they're doing, like, uh, like little, like, small avocadillos uh, and, like, a bunch of different cocktails for Cinco de Mayo. So maybe if you guys are around the area over there in Long Beach, you have to stop by at the places. And you yeah, just say Jonathan. Jonathan sent us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll know. He'll know. <laughs> you guys love, man. Sure you guys love. He's a good guy. That's what you guys love, man. That's what you guys do. So then it's Chef Ulises. <laughs> All right. So are you going out to eat after work? Is that kind of thing, or like if you work in seven uh, days? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, maybe I don't know. To be honest, I don't think uh, I'm. A, I'll probably stop by at my buddy's uh, spot. Yeah. Um, uh, still figuring it out. Right. So I gotta what? be here and so close up and and finish doing some things. Here yeah, yeah. When was the last time you took a vacation? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, man, I don't remember. I mean, um, I was. By the Guadalupe, this is like uh, like Mexican wine country. It's down in Baja. And this okay. was like maybe last year, I think, yeah, like a year ago. Yeah. Um, oh. I think that's probably like the last like place I've, ever, I've been at. Um, right. Uh, but it was kind of still work because it's by researching, right? Yeah, wine country. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, having fun and like eating good food and just like, you know, uh, getting motivated as well, you know, when people are doing other stuff, like uh, just like seeing that. It motivates you and like, you come back with uh you know like with more of that hunger and passion for to create things yeah yeah what are some of your favorite like des desserts that you've ever made uh desserts um i don't really do too many desserts but i i have to be honest but um it's not my strong point but um let's see i've done like this uh this like uh, forbidden rice or, or chata ice cream, that's really good. Mm. Um, people really fuss about it. So it's like a lavender uh, forbidden rice, which is like a black rice. Um, and I cooked it down with lavender, coconut cream, and just like uh, just like pretty much diluted it all the way down. So almost like activating the starch from the rice and just like putting it on the ice cream machine. And that one's pretty good. So we did that with uh, rompope buñuelos. And we added that. Oh, uh, yum! Yeah. And we also did like, uh, let's see, what else? What else have we done? We done a uh, panna cotta, the uh, masa pan. You know, like the mm -hmm. the masa pan, like the Mexican uh, powder peanut ca uh, candy. 
Mm-hmm. So we've done that one. So it's like a panna cotta, like a cream custard with, uh, like it multiplied the matta pan into it. Yeah, yeah. So that was a really good one too. And then also like a good play, like we done like a white mole chicken taco. So which is kind of like, uh, we had white chocolate to it. So it's kind of like oh. a sweet and savory kind of thing. So it's like, uh, like a pomegranate seeds to it, um, white chocolate. So we also done like another play on fresas con crema. Uh-huh. So it's like a, um, a strawberry. See, look, a you're strawberry already, you're already both already, Jonathan, with all the ones you just told me. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. true, huh? Any yeah, thoughts? Right there. And then Any... like a like caparotada, throw that in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you thought about writing a cookbook or is that kind of? Uh, yeah. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. But I mean, I haven't had an opportunity or like, the right approach you know nobody's approaching to it so i mean oh, hopefully yeah. one day you know for mm-hmm. sure yeah we're did... telling you and then you could have the launch right here at the library right kevin we'll, we'll for sure happen. yeah especially if you cook for us i mean not yeah. especially in addition to in addition <laughs> bonus, yeah <laughs> no, yeah uh, yeah, uh, yeah that ever happens uh, how did yeah how did here. you feel <laughs> How did you feel after you read the Bill Addison review of your of the breakfast burritos for you? Uh, I mean, even just in general, I feel like that was pretty cool because, uh, you know, like he took over Jonathan Gold's uh, place here in L.A. and just like getting like uh, written about through him. It's like an honor, you know, and just like uh, just kind of all the hard work and, and, you know, the long nights and stuff like that and, you know, just like slowly paying off. So which is really like uh, good, and then even like just last year, like getting mentioned on his list for the one-on-one best restaurants in LA. So that was pretty cool too. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Congrats! So very exciting and fun. Thank Bravo. you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah. I don't. I think that might be it. Um. You have anything else, Diane? Um, well, I already asked my dessert question, and then Jonathan and Kevin, you and I, we're going to be writing that book, the cookbook. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and then having the lunch party at the and then having, Yeah, because we already have the sections. We have, like, the taco section, you know, the entrees. We got, you know, the desserts. We have the cocktail section. Yeah, there we go. We just yeah. Need a, yeah, an agent and poetry. <laughs> <laughs> we got the library. So. <laughs> yeah. And I don't see any questions coming in other than some great comments. Yeah, um, yeah. And that they want us to have a library, you know, <laughs> bus come over to, you know, right. his restaurant, to your restaurant. <laughs> anything else you want to, yeah, anything else you want to tell the viewers about your tacos or uh, anything coming well, up for you? you? Uh, uh, well, thank you guys for having me, first of all, uh, and letting me share my cooking demo and, and some of our stuff that we, we do here in the restaurant. Uh, thank you guys for that. Um, also, you know, anybody that's there watching, you guys stop by, you know, and like we'll take care of you guys here. We'll do something special for you guys. You guys stop by, like if you're. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, like if we could give you guys like a little tour of the little place of the restaurant, you know, like the stuff that we do. Um, so we we we're like a share a share concept here. So we do like Mesoamerican food, modern Mexican, and we do specialty graded uh, Mexican coffee. Um, so I could give you guys a little tour of the little kitchen. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. That'd be awesome yeah. for sure. And I think so I have seen uh, Plaza de Cultura, the, the coffee program, yeah. and it was really interesting. Yeah, so, so yeah. this is, so this is our, our kitchen right here. This is, uh, this is Jenny, uh, Juan Carlos over there. Carlos! This is uh, <laughs> Ashley right here. Uh, Ashley! So this is like the, the kitchen space. Uh, this is like, uh, like we, we're not doing indoor seating. We, we have like an outdoor alfresco patio seating. Oh, so okay. right here we have a, also like a community fridge here for the, at the restaurant. So we provided meals for like the community around. Oh, so that's so could, cool. So they could come get a meal. Uh, so they just open that, it up and take it? Yeah, just open it up and take it. It's whatever we put in there or even like some of our friends like know us without you, the nonprofit, they donate uh, produce. Uh, you know, a bunch of like other food vendors from Smorgasburg, like Coffee Chick, also oh. Norgate, they've like given us a lot of food and stuff that we just like put it in for, for them so people could just come. So right here on this side, we'll set up like produce and stuff like or canned goods as well. Uh, and then people just like, they come, they take the stuff uh, as they need. And then right here, we have like a ticket book. Oh, they're mini libraries. Yeah. Um, 
We also got the trophy right here for the Taco Madness thing. <laughs> yeah. How how was that? So how did that work out? Like how did, how did the competition work? Was what? Uh, well, that one was uh, it was the year that we won was during COVID. Yeah. So you know it was kind of like crazy because you know nobody been to we all been that I I've never been to a pandemic so I'm sure like a lot of people it was fairly new to them and uh, just like going through that uh, they. People were still trying to get creative, and I know I like Copper. They were like doing a lot of like even like uh, online cooking and stuff. I did a demo for them too as well for like Cinco de Mayo uh, oh. <laughs> during that uh, for Taco Madness and stuff. And yeah, they were doing a lot of creative stuff. So just kind of like a lot of like the, some of the best taquerias in LA. They put them together in a bracket, and then they go head to head. Like the audience, the people, they vote. So you're kind of voting for the best taqueria, your best. I get her to make the next round, and then we were honored and to win that year during like COVID 2020. Uh, but yeah, let me just finish showing you guys the, the restaurant stuff. But yeah, yeah. We have that. Um, I'm gonna try to, I'm sorry, we have an outdoor patio. So I'm gonna go out for right here. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Wow. Right there yeah, on Cesar yeah. Chavez. Yeah, Cesar Chavez is my. So, and then that's how I like it looks from out here from the, from the outside. Uh, how long yeah, have you been here? Today. How long have you um, been there now? Well, I've been here for two years already. Oh, wow. Two years. Like, uh, two years, and then, uh, yeah, it's been good. Uh, we've been, uh, we uh, had a lot of, like, good recognition here. So uh, we're going to be so like uh, happy for the community as well and everybody around us that has been showing support and um, that's what keeps us going. Yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. Hey, what is your question? Like the, yeah, and also like the three concepts, you know, like we're very like close. So we help out each other, you know, like with certain things, you know, like the coffee guys, the minpa people and, and my sister and myself. Uh, like, you know, we're always, we have the same vision. So we're always like striving to be better every day. And you know, creating the best customer experience, so you go, you know, uplift one another to create a better experience for you guys. It's great, yeah. you have that support. And if you have the camera that way, there's there's the library way over there. Keep going on Caesar Chavez. There you go, downtown. Oh. Hey, <laughs> I don't <like> that way. <laughs> yeah, the other way. One of those ways. <laughs> hey, way. a great question way. came in. There it is. See the library? Yeah. If you squint. <laughs> <laughs> um, this question came in from Steve Orozco. Any special meaning behind Machi? Uh, no, to be, honest, to be honest, no, man. It was just one of those things that, you know, uh, we got the opportunity by uh, Bill Esparza uh, for Tacolandia, and we needed uh, to come up with something, and then it was just like the first thing that came to our mind with our you know, guys that we used to create food with, and it was just like we just went from there. <laughs> Okay. Can you guys yeah. hear me? Is it too loud or can you guys hear me? Yeah, may maybe we should go back in. Yeah, back in. Yeah, because yeah, the, okay. the car is, yeah. Okay. So for those of you who missed, we asked about the, the meaning of the name. The, um, and did you catch it, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of just came up on the flies from what it sounded like. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, we're back here. Uh, yeah, no worries. And yeah. then... um. We have one other question, and I don't, I don't think a lot of people know. When did you know you wanted to be a chef, or did you fall um, into it by accident? Honestly, like, uh, once I started cook, uh, cooking, not professionally, when I was at Yoshinoya, so that was my <laughs> first, like, kitchen job, you know, or, like, quote, unquote, you know, working in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, I fell in love with working with food and creating food and just, like, I love to eat as well, so it's just like one of those things that, <laughs> that, has, <laughs> that, that that I wanted to try new things that I was not fortunate enough to be able to try growing up. So that's why I went to culinary school as well to try some of these ingredients that I was never familiarized with and learn how to learn how to like taste and learn the food taste profile, and then that way you can manipulate these ingredients for your advantage and stuff. So that's kind of like how I got into it, and it's just like been like it's been good to me ever since. Were you like, I know when I was a little kid, I'd be in the kitchen with my uh, abuela and my mom, I'd be, you know, they'd be all cooking. And then I just remember my grandma never had real recipes. Like my, they would like grab her hand before she would throw stuff in a pot and they'd be like, it's a cup. It's, 
one tablespoon because she, you know she never wrote, wrote things down so did you do you remember have memories like that being in the kitchen with your family cooking and uh well actually so i i didn't grow up uh with uh my grandparents so i never met them but with my mom and like my tias you know uh in the, in the kitchen but i i could totally relate because you know like them like creating and you know like obviously our our beta recipe comes from my mom's uh created that recipe and i just kind of tweaked it up a bit and made it my own uh but even with that like learning it i would be like hey like like what do you add to this mom and you're like un poquito de esto and like this you know and they're yeah. like what is that though? you know and they're like <laughs> like you said un vaso a yeah. sauce, you know and it's like you know, kind of like figure it out man <laughs> yeah it was like a pinch of this we know what's a pinch yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty um. much yeah but i can relate with that i mean to, to that stuff as well but no, I mean, it's always been fun. Like, even so now, like, when I'm in the kitchen with my mom, we're always cooking with one another, and it's always fun. We're always, like, like you know, making fun of each other because, you know, she does certain things that I'm like, hey, like, maybe we do, these, do it this way because, you know, like, say I explain, like, why you do certain things. And I know, no, no, I've been cooking longer than you've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> she tries to just shut it down. <laughs> She's like, Ah. Uh, oh, here's another great question. Yeah, Steve wants to yeah. know. Uh, he wants to know any egg secrets you can share. Anything you learned? What'd you learn at IHOP? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's just like honestly, like to be honest, like the main thing I learned there is just like how to make like good pancakes. You just have to like, uh, to be honest, that's what it is. So, like, you just have to like the batter. Uh, you just have to like, you know, like leave chunks in it so like so, so, so they can rise up. That's like your secret. What? Uh, but the eggs is just yeah it's like you leave it leave the batter chunky like don't let it so runny so we leave it chunky and even with some of those like uh like built up flour in this it creates like that like spongy almost like the clay style you know but egg secrets i mean it's just like uh go a little temp you know that we don't burn them like i have this thing like here in the kitchen i get mad when they they start high heat and the eggs turn brown when like, we're making eggs not egg browns you know like i don't like even like the smell of it it's like low low temperature like low heat and just like constantly stir 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 mm -hmm. and then that like, we're just like constantly like you know just like you know like you're the mess in the eggs you know like you're like you know and just like just whatever ingredients you want to add to it but just like low heat low heat and constantly stir mm -hmm. huh. and then you can also add a lot of butter to it as well that, <laughs> like that sounds pretty good <laughs> Mas manteca, mas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still make pancakes? Uh, nah, I mean, that's honestly, funny. No. <laughs> you know, you know how to make it, right now. You're like, nah, I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> uh, I don't, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so that won't be included in our cookbook. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> how long were you? How long were you at IHOP for? I was there for a year. Uh, uh, a good year. Yeah, and it was just, uh, and honestly, like, I just took it, and it was funny, because, so I live in, like, Long Beach slash Carson, okay. and uh, my buddy of mine, he was going there to try to get a job, so I just tagged along, and he he got the interview, but he didn't get the job, and I was just kind of, like, teasing them, because I was like, how do you not get a job at IHOP? But, you know, <laughs> like, I, when he heard me, and he's not like, because they make you take a test. Um. So I took a test, and I passed it, and he's like, oh, do you want a job? Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, so I just took the job. But, I mean, not, nothing in particular. It was, like, a good year, you know? <laughs> was that before you went to culinary school or after? Oh, that was after, like, way after. It was, like, uh, after um, I stopped working at Lermitage. I mean, no, uh, after I stopped working at a pizzeria market in Culver City. Was that a trip for you to just go from, like, fancy French cooking to IHOP, or was it just uh, I think it was more like a break, more like a, oh. more like a, like a small break yeah uh, from like working a lot and it was like uh honestly like the the thing i did learn a lot so how to be like a like a better more like experienced line cook because you know like you're you know like you're it's so much like rush in there it's, it's so busy oh. that you just learn how to be like you know like pura chinga you know just like yeah. you know just like just like on the go and stuff yeah, yeah. so it's just like, it builds you better even on your like mentally when you're like handling stuff like you kind of like learn how to adapt to that but yeah, i mean yeah. it was overall it was a good job too you know like you learn a lot from every job you have you know yeah, yeah. for sure 
So that's probably why you passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you won't tell your friend. <laughs> yeah, tell him to not watch this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Anything else, Diane? No, I just, I'm excited to, uh, we're going to have to go down there. Yeah, for sure. We'll take a library excursion yeah. one yeah. day. Yeah, we'll go there for yeah, lunch. Yeah. Yeah, stop by, yeah. you know, uh, we're here, you know, and also like, you know, even the coffee guys, you know, like they'll give you guys a good, uh, good uh, experience through like their, their coffee beans and the way they, you know, like they work with their, their beans and stuff. And actually I have Juan Carlos right here. Let me tell you guys a little bit of what we do. You want to tell them a little bit of the, of the coffee? The grinding. There you go. How are you? Hey, can you guys hear from Carlos? Good afternoon. Hey. How are you? Hi, Carlos. Hi. Good, good. Welcome. Uh, well, yeah, you wanted me to share a little, a little bit, bit of the coffee. The coffee yeah. yeah. So with our coffee, we're working with all seasonal, organic, fair wage coffee. And kind of like Chef John, you know, as, as the year goes by, different ingredients are going to be available. The same thing applies to real coffee. So coffee, like any other produce, is a fruit. And coffee, like any other produce, is a fruit. And uh, there's certain times of the year, certain regions, certain producers like farmers and farm lots and things like that are going to be producing really amazing coffee. And we're fortunate to source from three different roasters um, Cafe Salad in Mexico, Picaresca here locally in Royal Heights, and Forge Coffee in downtown LA. And all these roasters align with our kind of our mission of working with the world, quality ingredients. So seasonal or naturally organic fruit. Sometimes at the moment for our iced coffee, we have an heirloom variety. So, you know, this is a fruit that is sometimes harvested. And instead of being just sprayed down to wash, we have certain natural process coffee that we really like to carry here where the coffee is fermented in its own fruit, kind of like a sun-dried tomato or a raisin for 60 to 90 days, oh. uh, depending on what the farmer's looking for. Then that's roasted. So we get coffees that are very complex, a lot of sweet notes, uh, earthy notes, sometimes uh, a little bit of like dark chocolate covered cherry notes, depending on where it's coming from. So that's the type of coffee that we work with. And aside from the quality of coffee, we have a few different ways of extracting our coffee here. So we do we do pour overs, we do French press. We do cold brew, we do espresso, um, and sometimes we'll experiment and, you know, do a little something like a, a, a special rare bean uh, coffee available, or sometimes we'll try like a new ratio, a different type of extraction form on something. But that's a little bit about the coffee program that we start here with Machine in the morning for their breakfast and brunch. Oh, yeah, wow. Any other questions or wow. It's perfect for summer coffee. coming iced coffee. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our My iced coffee, like I said, this is a really rare iced coffee. Uh, where for over 50 years, the farmers have not um, had the coffee cherry crossbreed or mixed with any other coffee variety. Of so the genetics of this has just been single origin for over five generations. And that's just what we have on iced coffee right now. Um, wow. But like I said, we're just rotating through different types of coffees throughout the year. Um, and depending on what the farmer has in store for us too, you know, on their process. Um, there's one farmer that is out of season at the moment. There's one farmer from Oaxaca, Enrique Lopez, that only harvests during full moons. Because what? he understands, him and his farmers understand that the moonlight creates a certain... Um, attraction from the coffee cherries so the ripe coffee cherries end up being even sweeter if they're harvested under full moon so wow. these are some of the specialty graded coffees that we work with and just a little bit about some of the farmers we have. that sounds like a children's picture book too wow yo i know right <laughs> coffee <laughs> which coffees do you like chef john any memorable ones uh, I do the, uh, what is that one? The, we had a Puebla that we used once for, for the For the white mole. So remember how I was talking to you guys about the white mole? Yeah. Uh, so we used your Puebla from Café Salad. So we added those beans. And actually, Bill Addison wrote about it. Also on the LA Times on that article. Oh. Like when we collaborated with Café Café to do the white mole. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, for, I saw, I saw uh, but also the, uh, 
what I like to drink here, the um, my guy right here from Carlos uh, Cortado. I've Cortado, that's what I usually just like drink here. Very I... classic chef's drink. It's a small drink, so you're not going to be sipping on it all day. It's a double shot of espresso with a double shot of steep milk or cold milk, uh, depending. Here we do oat milk and almond milk. A uh, little bit of ground honey, and then, uh, excuse me, ground cinnamon combined with raw honey. So that's the one that Chef John likes to drink. And it's a small little cup, you know, so you just got to sip on it four or five times, and before you know it, you're ready to go properly it up. Yeah, that's how it works like, 24 uh, hours. <laughs> yeah. Like seven days a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, the, all, the, all the beans and mushroom pop and fly up too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also right now for the heat we have these refreshers too that they do so we do like a, a la uh, lavender uh, no sorry not lavender saffron lemonade uh, with the passion fruit reduction in it and that was a really popular one mm. uh, and also the berry jamaica uh, and uh, blueberry thyme mojito which mm. is pretty good uh, and then also they do a uh, lab, uh, lavender, what is it, milk oh, cream? One that's yeah. off menu right now that uh, I just shared with Chef John is that we, uh, we have a lavender chamomile milk tea that some people know about because it's off menu, but then aside from that, we have a small few people who are looking for an horchata, but because I want to avoid all the starchiness and carbs that come with horchata and all the sugar that's traditionally done, we actually do a lavender chamomile milk tea infused with brown cinnamon. And the end is like a lavender or chata type of profile. Mm. So very smooth, very refreshing. And Chef John gave me the approval the other day, so I was happy about that. There we go. <laughs> An addition to the book. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Thank right, you yeah. so Thank much. Thank you so much, everyone. Very nice to uh, share with you. That was cool. Yeah. Man, the moon coffee sounds crazy. I know. <laughs> that is amazing. I forget that coffee is fruit. Like you're just like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It is. Wow. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's nice. oh. oh, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for, you know, like uh being open to seeing our, our little small restaurant and meeting the coffee guys. Um you know you guys are always welcome whenever you guys want to stop by. Yeah. I mean it's such a great story and uh congratulations on all your success. Yeah. Thank you. Bravo. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't have gotten this far if it wasn't for like our customers and people are, like believing in us and supporting in, in our work we do as well. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Right. Well, come by and visit us at the, the library. We're here for you too, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys. Yeah, I got to stop by. And, uh, I'm going to turn my camera back on. Okay. Me too. Hold on. Here we go. Here he is. Here All I right. is. <laughs> All right. Thanks again so much, Jonathan. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. We got a bonus. Got I know. Bonus. I mean, I am pretty excited to go out and, and um, try some of the food. All right. So well, thank great. you so much for joining us for today's LA May program. And remember to check out the library's online calendar at lapl.org slash events. And don't forget... <laughs> to check out our next program on Thursday, May 12th at 4 p.m., where journalist Chris Nichols presents the history of Disneyland. Disneylandia, <laughs> people. Yes, uh, as many people call it. Uh, Chris Nichols presents the story of Disneyland, well, Disney's visionary theme park in Anaheim, California. From Walt's California inspirations to the team of filmmakers, effects artists, and tinkerers, we will see a bountiful visual history, including stunning color photographs, concept drawings, and ephemera drawn from the historical collection of the Walt Disney Company and the golden age of photojournalism. Uh, this is a free event, and those attending the virtual program will have a chance to win a free copy of Chris's book. Um, so be there or be square. Um, oh, and we have the uh, we also have a big read program happening tomorrow at 1 p.m. That is the history of the International Refugee Committee. Yes. OK. Steve's saying yes. yes. Uh, that's tomorrow. That's at one. Um, so we hope you can make that as well. And we also have two more at big read programs on Saturday, one at one o'clock. And I believe the next other one is at four. But you could check out LAPL.org. Uh, forward slash big read. We put that in the comments and mm -hmm. uh, and it's also down right there on the screen. So you can Cheese check out eyes. all the amazing big read programs and you could also get the book, The Best We Could Do. 
Yes. Um, okay. So until next time, we truly appreciate all your support. The success of Valley Maid and all our, of our library programs could not happen without viewers like you. So thank you. Gracias. Kevin, let's go get some. Uh, let's, let's get some. Let's get some drinks and tacos. Yeah. Yeah. Or moon coffee. Moon coffee. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>